Hello, I'm Svetlin Nako from Softuni, the Software University. I'm an experienced software engineer and programming instructor, and I'm here for the part 7 of my free job basics coding tutorial, in which I teach basic programming skills for absolute beginners in a series of video lessons with hands-on coding exercises. First, I should warn you that if you missed the previous parts, you should review them first to catch up. In this lesson, I will talk about whoops and how to repeat a block of code several times. I will explain and demonstrate with code examples the for whoop in Java and how to increase a variable from one to certain limit, let's say n, in a whoop and how to read, for example, a sequence of n numbers from the console and calculate their sum. Whoops allow us to iterate over the numbers, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 10 or until 100. As a more complex example, I will show you how to create a whoop with a step. For example, you can uh, step uh, from uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, uh, 8, 10, etc. until you reach, for example, 100. Or another example is to go through the numbers from 10 down to 0 with a step of minus 2. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, until 0. So next I will explain the concept of the ASCII table uh, in computer science and how text characters are numbered and how to iterate over the letters from A to Z, for example, A, B, C, D, until Z, because uh, text characters match uh, certain numbers, for example, the, the A it has a number 65, P has a number of 66, etc. So, you, uh, uh, in the same way, like you iterate over numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, you can iterate over letters, for example, A, B, C, D, etc. I will also explain the basic concept of infinite whoops and how to exit from a whoop uh, with the break operator. Because sometimes we don't know at which uh, time to stop, so we write an infinite whoop. A whoop without which repeats endlessly, and we exit from the whoop when a certain condition is met. For example, when we read the special character end from the console. As usually, we'll have several practical coding exercises at the end of this lesson, and I'll show you how to solve uh, most of these exercises and how to submit your solutions in the judge system to get an automated grading and immediate feedback. Don't skip the coding exercises at the end of this lesson. They give you practical coding skills and programming experience, which is very, very important. To learn coding, you should code. To become a software developer, you should write code and develop software. To the exercises, you can become a developer without developing software, without coding. So, code, 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 this is quite important. Okay, now it's time, it's time to start with the lesson and learn how to use whoops in Java. Let's start. So, let's go ahead with the whoops. The whoops are important construction in programming because they are allowed to repeat something many times, which is something we do in our life also. For example, we uh, go many times to the shop or we constantly every day repeat going to our job place, for example. So this is another example. We have um, a set of dishes and we want to put uh, this this plates a set of plates we want to put these plates in the dishwasher machine so this is a repeating action we take some dish some plates and we put them them in a dishwasher machine we take another piece of several plates and we put them in the dish dishwasher machine we take more more plates and we put them in the dish washer machine so this is a repeating action in programming we have many times uh, when we need to repeat something several uh, number of executions for example until the uh, last uh, plate is is reached please take a plate and put it in the dishwasher machine for example so we have many such situations and they are modeled and implemented with whoops in programming and with some repeating actions in the real world. 
So it's time to go and uh, tell you a little bit more about Whoops and to show you the for loop in Java, which is a powerful control flow statement for repeating a piece of code several times. It looks like this, for, and we say, uh, please assign int to be a starting, starting from i, repeat until i is still not reached the value of 10, and say e plus equal to one, or e plus plus. So increment i with one here and print i, which will print 1, and print i multiplied by 1, which will print 1. At the next iteration, it will print 2 and 4. At the next iteration, it will print 3 and 9, etc. So, this is how this works. This is called the initialization uh, part of the for loop, initial value, uh, where we declare and assign uh, some the so-called loop variable. This is the condition um, part of the for loop. This is the so-called step far part of the for loop. And this is the so-called loop part. So, in loops, we have a loop variable. Variable which changes its value through the loop, over the loop, inside the loop. The loop stops when its loop condition it's not matched. And the, after the end of each loop, the step is applied. So it moves from one loop step or one iteration to the, to the next one. I'll show you this in practice because it's quite important. So we can say for int i starts from 5, for example, until i is less than 10. I will increment i plus one, i plus plus, i by one, and I'll print the number i. See what will happen. I'll start this program here, and it will print the numbers from five to ten. These are the numbers: five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can print them like this without a new line, and it will be something like this one. I can also print a space after each number and I'll print them on the same line. Multiple from 5 to 10 on the same one. Uh, but I can start from 0 until 9. Start with 0 until 9 is reached. If until the value of the loop variable is less than 10. And because it's integer, the biggest number less than 10 will be 9. So this is how this work will work. It's from 0 to 9. Okay. Uh, I can also start from 10 until i is bigger than 0. And I will decrement this i from 10 to 1. This is a loop from 10 to 1. Down, downstairs, down. <laughs> it's a backward direction loop. Okay, so I can also say it's double A is 2 while I is less than this. 124 i is equals to i multiplied by 2 so it will stop from 2 until this and it will be increased two times at each iteration so it will be 2 4 8 16 32 64 until 124 okay it will be it's better to be int. This is how this works. It works very, very well. Okay, so, but the general most common way to use for is to say for, press tab, and say int i is 1, i is less than an oracle to 5, i++. 
So this way we print the numbers as out from one to five. And we can also print hello after that. So we have a several comments here and all these comments are executed as a loop watch. It's one hello, two hello, three hello, until five hello. If I put only this, like in if, the loop body will be only this, if I don't have the curly brackets. And this will be after the loop. So I'll have the numbers from one to five, followed by hello. This is the result. Okay, so, but this is the typical way to implement for. We have for, we can use even this template for i, and it's, it's from 1 to, for example, from 0 to 9, or I always prefer to have i less than or equal to 10. So now I have from 1 to 10, and I print i. This is how this works. Let me check whether this works. Yes, this works very well. So this is how the loop works. It starts from four. It always has these brackets and it has three parts. The first part, semicolon, second part, semicolon, and the third part. The first initialize the loop variable. The second uh, specifies the loop exit condition and the third one specifies how we reach from one step to another, how the loop variable changes uh, after each iteration. Okay, so this is the loop body which can consist of single oper single statement or multiple statements uh, which should be in this curly brackets if they are multiple okay so the for loop allows the code to be executed repeatedly while certain condition is true and it consists of initialization condition step and loop body so the initialization initializes the loop variable it might declare or just initialize uh, something for example if this is declared i can here just initialize it. It will work the same way, but usually we declare and initialize at the same one inside the loop this variable, and this variable will not be available after the loop. Do you see? It's it's invisible here. Why? Because it's declared here inside the loop. So it's available here, but it's not available here. The scope is limited inside the loop of this variable i. So this is the recommended way to use loops. Uh, so the initialization usually declares the variables and gives to this variable an initial value. After that, we have condition, something like until while it's true that i is not reached 10, execute something. And the step updates the loop variable after each iteration, after the loop body. This uh, is executed after. So if we have one, two, three here in the loop body, finally, after the last step, this will be executed and this just updates the loop variable. Okay, so let's solve a simple problem. It's called first n number sum. It's about writing a program which sums the numbers from, from 1 to n and prints at each step of this process the uh, current result. So it reads a number n and sums all numbers from 1 to 10 and prints something like for 5 it says 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals to 15. So if we enter as input 6 the result will be 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 2 and the sum which is 21. So let's solve this problem. It's called first n numbers sum. I'll create a new class here 
which will be called first n numbers sum. Okay. And this class will hold main method, which uh, will read a scanner, scanner equals to new scanner of system.n okay and I'll read the input value n it will be something like int n equals to scanner dot next int please read me the next int and then uh, I'll make a for loop for i using this template for i starts from 1 to n it will be 1 2 3 4 until n okay and I will need the sum long sum equals 0 at the beginning and at each iteration sum will be increased with i and after that it will be printed something like uh, Okay, it will be increased by, by by i, but additionally I will print i, uh, but I will need this plus. This plus will be if something like, okay, I will print the plus, um, just to see what happens, and I will make it I'll print i, then I'll print this plus. Let's see what will happen, just as a start. It's not finished, the, the solution is not finished. So I print 5, it says 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus. So I have one additional plus here, which is not needed. So I'll say if i is less than n, only at this case I'll have plus. So now this was plus will be removed. Okay. And now I should print equals and the sum which I have already calculated. So if I print uh, 5, the sum is this. Oh, the sum looks like the sum here is incorrect but why one plus two plus three okay I will use the debugger here and will ah because I assume I one plus two plus three Let's see what happens. I'll say debug here because it's unusual. So the debugger should stop here when I press 5. So the sum is initially 0 and i is 1. F8 sum is now 1 and I print one plus so now i is two and the sum is now two oh oh it's equals plus e it should be sum plus equals e or sum equals to sum plus E. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> what a ugly bug. Okay. So we fix the bug and now the result is correct. The next uh, example is 6. And if we sum the numbers from 1 to 100, the result will be this. It works very, very well. 
Okay, so we solved this problem and this is the solution I had in mind before the start. We start from some one, we print one and we iterate from two to n and we print press plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five until n. And we increment the sum with this i at each, um, at each step. So finally we print equals to the sum. Uh, my solution was a little bit different, but in a sense is the same thing. We iterate over the numbers, we print them and we, we calculate the sum of them. Okay, so let's go ahead to with another example. It's about writing a program to some given n numbers. So it reads from the input uh, n, which is the count to the numbers to come. And after that, it reads n floating point numbers. It calculates and prints their sum. So for example, if we want to sum the numbers 10, 20, and 30, we should first specify that we'll have three numbers. And after that, we'll print 10, 20, and 30 and the sum will be 60, will, will enter. So this is the input. It first enters the number n here, and after that, n times it enters floating point number. Another example is this, four, and we sum these numbers, and the result is 6.4, okay? So let's go ahead to solve this problem. I'll create a class which will be called sum n numbers because this is the uh, problem I want to solve and in the main I will go at the next uh, file to take this scanner and reading n we'll return back using control tab we'll import this java YouTube scanner automatically so now we have n and I'll say that the sum, table sum, starts from zero because if the numbers are still not summed, their sum at the start is zero. After I take the first number, I will append it, I will add it to the sum and it will increase. Later I will add the next number, the next and so on. So, I will do something like uh, 4, I want to have n times to enter a number, something like table number equals to scanner dot next table, I take the next number and I sum it, sum equals to sum uh, equals the sum plus number okay and finally we print the sum let's see how this works run this code and let's see whether it's correct or not i'll enter three numbers 10 20 30 and the result is six looks looks like it works and i'll enter two numbers 1.5 and 3.5 the sum is 5 okay and if I enter this this example it's very interesting I'll show you something unusual for Java uh, typical for Java but unusual for you this is the result it's in fact 6.4 the sum is 6.4 if we use the calculator but see what happens this happens because uh, java and also the microprocessors in the computer working correctly and they uh, don't rep represent correctly the floating point numbers so if we have 6.4 there is no such number in in the representation this number can be represent, represented with some approximations. This is because of the IEEE uh, 754 standard, uh, but generally 
you should be aware of this and if you want to uh, print this correctly you can just format it percent uh, f2 for example print f with slash n print the sum so it will be something like 6.4 oh uh, was this correct uh, it's point dot 2f okay to use two digits after the decimal point so now it's correct but if we have 12 digits after the decimal point the result maybe will be incorrect oh it's still correct but if i have 22 digits after the decimal point maybe i'll have a problem do you see so the floating point numbers just pre they preserve a, a limited number of digits for the numbers and they work correctly uh, if you use only certain several digits in the number if you need more digits for example 100 then these numbers don't, don't work correctly but generally if we use money calculations for example in most countries this uh, two decimals places after the decimal point are enough okay so let's go ahead and see the solution i had in mind before the start i read the number and i start from sum zero and times i read from the next input from the standard input from the console and i append this number to the sum finally i print the sum so this is very similar solution okay we learned how to use for loops in order to repeat from 1 to 10 from 1 to n or from 0 to n minus 1 repeating from certain starting position until some end position with i plus plus watch but we can use loops with a step so i'll show you how loops with the step in in fact use the step part in the for loop which can either increase decrease the value of the variable or change the value with some step or with under some certain formula so this is an example how we iterate from 0 to 9 with step 2 it will print 0 2 four six eight okay so how we achieve this we start from zero we repeat while the number 10 is not reached and after each iteration the next value of i is calculated as i plus two i'll show you this example here in intellij idea so i'll have a for loop okay i'll use this template it will be from 0 to to 10 inclusively and it will be not i plus plus but it will be i equals to i plus 2 okay let's see what i will achieve run this example i will achieve 0 2 4 6 8 10. this is a step two usually we print this e plus equals two okay let's run it again and see whether it works the same way it will uh what else we can start from 100 and continue while i is bigger than zero and I'll have I minus minus. So I have a step of minus one. Let's see. It starts from 100 and it decreases one by one until one is reached. 
or while the number is positive. When it reached zero, it's the loop stops. This is another example how we iterate from 10 to zero with step minus two. From 10 to zero inclusively, e minus equals two with step minus two. Let's see this. It will be 10, 8, 6, etc. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, until 0. But this be, should be greater or equal than if we have the wrong uh, here. See what will happen. Nothing because this is true at the start and this uh, loop body will never be repeated. This is always false. It's not that it's false uh, at the start. So just be careful about this condition to be correctly uh, created. Also, it might not be i, it might be something else. This is a variable, it might be counter. So I'll start with 10, counter while well, it's bigger than 0 counter plus equals 2 and I print the counter. This is called the loop variable. It might be i, x, counter or something else. Never mind. Okay, so this is how we can use loop for loop with the step. It's very powerful but pay attention on the condition especially if you have negative step. Um, so one problem. How to create a program uh, which prints all the numbers ending by 7 in given range. So we'll read a number n and we should print all numbers from 7 to n which end with 7. For example 7, 17, 27 or 7, 17, 27, 37. The numbers less than or equals to this n, okay, which end by 7. Okay, how we can solve this? I'll create a new class and it will be called numbers ending by 7. By 7. Okay, I'll create my main method and the most simple way to solve this is to I'll take this scanner and n because it's the same for this problem it will be something like please start from 0 until n inclusively and if i percent 10 equals 7 if the number ends by 7 print the number. So let's see if we have as input. Uh, sorry, I need to run this problem, not the previous one. If I have as input, for example, 40, it will be 7, 17, 27, 37. But it's better to have a step plus equals 7. And now if I start by 7, the if will not be needed. See, this will work the same way because it starts 7 plus 7, 14 plus 7, 21, etc. So, this is how this works. Exactly the same, but it's less cold and more understandable and faster. Okay, so this is how we solve this problem. It's exactly this solution uh, it's oh it's i plus equals 10 sorry it sh this number should end by 7 oh what a mistake okay we have for example 40 so numbers which end by 7 are 7 17 plus 10 27 etc until this Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called exam countdown.
to write a program which prints a countdown to an exam, like below. We read an integer t, the days before the exam, and we print uh, five days before the exam. And the next day we print four days before the exam. Later we print three days before the exam, two days before the exam, one day before the exam, and finally the exam has come. Okay? This is an example. If we start with three, we print three days before the exam, two days before the exam, uh, one day before the exam, etc. And finally the exam has come. Okay? I'll pre create a class which will be called countdown. Exam countdown. Exam countdown. And the main method here will be something like I still have this in, in the clipboard. Uh, I'll need this number T. So I'll create a for loop from starting from T. It will be counter. Well, counter is bigger or equal than one. And it will be counter minus minus. And at the loop body, I'll print that uh, current day counter counter plus days before the exam. Okay. And after the loop, finally, I'll print something like the exam has come the exam has come let's see how this works i start this program and i start from five for example five days before the exam four days before the exam three days two days and finally the exam has come we can start from two it's like this. If we start from zero, exam has already come. Okay, so this is the example and this is the solution. Now we can, it's very similar, which, but it's just similar loop, similar for loop. And the print is using printf. And the exam has come as the final thing after the loop. It's very simple thing just to demonstrate a loop which starts from n and decreases n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 until 1. The countdown. Okay. Let's go ahead with the next topic. It's about iterating over characters. It might be useful in certain situations. Uh, but let's start uh, with the way computers represent text. So computers only can understand numbers. If you want to use text, we need to match uh, text values to certain numbers. So the ASCII, American standard for coding of information or something like this, is the numerical representation of a character. For example, the character number number uh, 97, 97 is the char A. The char P is 90A. This is in hex and this is in HTML. So numbers have ASCII code. ASCII is the American standard for, for the characters, okay? It's a standard and you can learn more at here ASCIIcode.com. There are many sites like this, but this is something which uh, shows the numbers and their representation. For example, uh, the number 36 is the, represent the dollar symbol. The exclamation mark is 33. For example, uh, 
the A capital to 65. For example, A small is 97. For example, X is 120. So these are the numbers in the ASCII table. Uh, they might be different, uh, the numbers after 128, depends on the encoding. Sometimes they may hold uh, Kirlik letters, but sometimes they hold some other letters. Uh, but generally, uh, the ASCII table uses one byte, 8 bits, to represent the characters. And there is another encoding called Unicode, which represents more, much more characters uh, using some more powerful uh, encoding. For example, again, each character has uh, a number, but it supports one million characters. For example, the Kirillic letters, the Greek letters, the Arabic letters, the Chinese letters, uh, Indian letters, etc, etc, etc. So, Java uses this Unicode, which is an extension of the ASCII standard, and it holds much more characters. Okay, why I explain this? Because values in char in the char data type, which are enclosed by apostrophes, are encoded in this Unicode. In Java, we can have four loops which iterates over character, like it's shown below. I'll show you this also. So I can have four char x starts from a uh, x is less than or equal to z, x plus plus, and I can print this character x. So see what's the result. It's from A to Z, the entire English alphabet with small letters. Do you see? So I can start from uh, A to Z capital, and this is 65, 66, and, and the other symbols. I can also uh, take the numeric value. I can print x and I can print space after that and I can print the int of x. See, this is called type conversion. I convert x from char, from letter to number, to int. This will give it its Unicode number. Okay, so these are the numbers. If I start from Kirlik A to Kirlik Ya, see what will happen. It will print above uh, its, this is the number. So this is the Kirlik alphabet. I can do similarly for the Greek alphabet, for the Chinese alphabet, etc. So they have numbers. This is, these are the concepts that uh, characters in computers have numbers. Different encoding tables may give them different numbers, but generally this universal Unicode character representation is used and it's widely accepted. Everyone can read Unicode, okay? So we can iterate over characters and we can uh, transfer from char to int and the opposite. So if I have for loop int from uh, one until 10, i is less than equal 10, i plus plus, I can print i, but I can print char of i plus 65 minus 1. So this will print a, b, c, d, the first 10 English alphabet letters. How this happens, and a, b, c, d until j, 
because I know that a is 65 minus 1 and plus 1 or I can do this from 0 until 10 so I plus 65 is the first letter 65 66 is the next and I convert this to char so this works very well and this will print the first 10 English capital letters so this is how characters work in Java and we can convert like this ch char 65 will print this so that's all about using characters now let's solve a problem which is called latin letters write a program to print the latin letters in certain range we read two letters on separate lines uh, and we print all letters in this range for example if we print a and c we start from a until c if we print from w to z it will be w x y z this is another example from f to q it will be f g h i g etc until q okay so let's solve this problem it's called latin letters i will create a new java class latin letters with a letters and i'll have this main for uh, i will need the scanner i'll take it from here and i'll need to read the first letter string uh, letter is scanner dot next line but i don't need the the letter as a string i need the letter as a char so i'll take the first of this next line dot char at position zero this is a little bit tricky but if you have a string for example hello hello at position zero is this h at position one is this e at position two is this so i take the first letter and i transfer it to char this is specific and this is the start letter and also i will read the same way the end letter and now once i have these two letters from example x and z i can iterate using a for loop something like char letter starts from start letter until letter is less than or equal to end letter and letter plus plus so i can increment this character plus plus for a character means just give me the next uh, letter in the alphabet and i'll print this letter it should be on the same line so it will be letter plus empty and finally i'll print the new one let's see what happens so for example i want all english letters from a to e it's a b c d e. looks correct from a to z looks correct and what will happen if i have from a capital until x small it's a b c d e, so it's the alphabet after that some other letters then the alphabet why because this is the numbers these are the numbers this is 97 96 95 etc so after z the next ask called character is this before a it's the this left apostrophe so this is how it works and 
This is the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. The specific thing here is dot char at zero. Because if we have scanner.nextline, it will read a string which may hold several letters. So we take the first letter only from this string. Then we iterate and print uh, this. Okay, we are ready for the next topic for today. It's about infinite loops. Infinite loops, it's about repeating some piece of code infinitely. How we can achieve this? Uh, just like this. We can have empty initialization, empty condition and empty increment. For semicolon, semicolon, and this is an infinite loop. I'll show you uh, here. So I can have four semicolon, semicolon, and infinite loop, and I print hello, for example. So see what will happen. Uh, sorry, I need to run this program, not the Latin letters program. It just says hello. Do you see? And it will hang because it's infinite. It's highly not recommended to do this, but sometimes people do it. So why they do it? Because they can do like this. Uh, I read a, a string. String name is scanner dot next line, and after that, I say hello was name was exclamation. See what will happen. This is the word in letters. Sorry, I want this main to be started. So I'm Svetlin. Hello Svetlin. I'm Peter. Hello Peter. I'm Mariah. Hello Mariah. This is something which is very often. For example, the traffic whites, they just repeat the same thing infinitely. They start the green white, then the yellow white, then the red white, and then again the green white. And this is infinite, so this is something absolutely valid. But I can say if name is and I say break. Break means exit from this loop, break the loop. So oh, this it, it doesn't work in Java. Close end. Okay. And now I'm enter some names. Mariah, hello Mariah. Uh, for example, Muhammad, hello Muhammad. For example, Peter, hello Peter. And hello and and process finished. So this is how I can make infinite loop, but I can still stop it under certain condition. So this is how infinite loop work in programming. They repeat certain logic infinitely. For example, in game development, we have continuously drawing the game environment. We draw the screen, uh, we take the input from the players, we make some calculations and draw the screen again. We take some input from the uh, players, we recalculate the game logic and we draw the game environment again on the screen so this is repeated infinitely and when we draw animations we draw a frame wait a little bit draw another frame etc uh, in web servers we wait for plants and when they come we serve them for example uh, the site google.com uh, waits for clients to come 
and when someone comes it prints the Google uh, website so this is a problem which sums numbers until stopped we want to read integers from the console and print their sum until zero is entered for example we enter five it says the sum is five we add three and the sum is eight we add two and the sum is ten we add ten and the sum is twenty we print zero enter zero and we say goodbye so this is how this will work some numbers until stopped i will create a java class some numbers until stopped ugly name but but it's correct so what i'll have i have this scanner it's on the clipboard and i'll say something like four infinite loop and at each iteration we read a number something like int num equals to scanner dot next next int okay and once i have the num i will sum it uh, it will be something like long sum starts from zero and i'll say sum equals the sum plus the number okay equals sorry and i'll print it something like the sum is now was the sum okay with spaces around and let's see what happens i run this and i start from 5, the sum is 5. More 3, 8. More 5, 13. More 2, 15. But this will never stop. If I say if here, if the num is 0, then I will break. And after the whoop, I will print goodbye. Let's see what happens now. I enter number 5. This sum is 5, 3. It says 0. It says goodbye. So this is what we needed to implement. This is the solution. It's very, very, very similar. I read the next integer if it is zero i stop the loop otherwise i sum the next number i add it to the num to the sum and i print the sum finally i print goodbye but this is after the entire loop has completed and stopped okay this was the last thing i had in mind for this lesson and now it's your time to work with loops. It's very, very, very important that you write your code. You need to solve some problems in order to learn in practice how to work with loops to implement. See, see or how home works in the wording system and try to work on them. After a while, I'll come back and I'll show you my solutions, but please try to write some loops and write some code because programming is learned only by coding. Let's now solve the problems you had as assignments. So I will show you my solutions and I hope that you have um, successfully solved at least part of them. So let's go with the practical coding exercises and the solutions that I want to give you for you just as a hint uh, to help you solve them yourself because you will work coding when you solve the problems yourself, not when you are listening and watching videos uh, about how others uh, do the same thing. So the first problem is called power of number. It's about writing a program to calculate n raised to the power of p so we read a number n which is a floating point number and a power p uh, 
So this power is an integer and we need to calculate and print the result of, uh, of n to the power raised to the power of p. So we are not allowed to use the mat.pow function which does exactly this thing. Uh, we want to use whoops because we are now learning how to use whoops. Uh, let's uh, give you some example. Dver, uh, 2 ra raised to the power of 5 is 32 and also 3 raised to the power of 4 it's 81 and 2.5 raised to the power of 3 is 15.625 how did this uh, runs uh, let, let let's see uh, so 2 raised to the power of 5 is in fact is in fact 2 multiplied by 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 and this is 5 times right so we need to repeat 5 times the multiplication by 2 and how we start we start from 1 because 2 raised to the power of 0 is 1 2 raised to the power of uh, 1 is 2 is 1 multiplied by 2 so if we have power 1 we multiply by 2 if we have power 2 we multiply 2 times by 2 if we have power of 3 we multiply 3 times by 2 so we need to multiply this p times multiplication by this multiply by this and start from one so this is just a simple whoop i will write the code to show you how this works power of numbers so i open intellij idea and in my project for whoops i'll create a new java class called power of number okay and i'll put the main method and i'll take the scanner from the previous uh, was because I don't want to write this again and I will read the input int n equals to scanner dot next next integer okay this is the uh, next double it it will be double double the uh, number we raise to certain power and the power uh, int p the power will be the scanner dot next next int okay so we say that double result initially is one because if we uh, raise n to the power of zero the result will be one and one is neutral value for the multiplication just like when we calculate a sum we start from zero it's neutral for counting from for sums and for multiplication, the neutral value is 1. We uh, perform a whoop and we repeat p times. p times we multiply the result, result equals to result multiplied by n. So if we have uh, 0, this whoop will not be executed and the result will be 1. If we have 2 raised to the power of 1, this will be uh, executed once and the result will be 2, etc, etc, etc. So finally we'll print the result and let's run and test whether this works correctly. So 2 raised to the power of 5 should be 33, uh, 32. Let's check. Oh, it takes a lot of time to compile. 2 raised to the power of 5 it's 32 it's correct 2 raised of the power of 0 is 1 uh, 2 raised to the power of 1 is 2 2.5 raised to the power of 2 is 6.25 and our example here 2.5 at power of 3 it's 15.625 works this works 3 4 is 81 3 4 is 81 works correctly and 
we can be sure that we multiply n times uh, p times we multiply by n so we achieve n by n by n etc by n and this is p times and when p is 0 the result will be 1 when p is 1 the result will be n if will be n and if p is 2 the result will be n by n etc this is how this works and this is the algorithm you should learn how to write such simple algorithms based on for loops we repeat p times multiplying by n okay so let's see the solution i had in mind before the start of this lesson uh, we read the double n, the number we want to raise to certain power. We read the power p uh, and we start from uh, initial result 1. We repeat p times and we multiply the result by n uh, p times. And finally, we print the result. Exactly the same solution which I wrote uh, a few seconds ago. The next problem is called multiplication table. It's about to write a program which prints the multiplication a table such as we use when we are at school uh, it's a 510 for given integer n we read n and we print something like this for example if we print uh, read 2 uh, the result will be 2 multiplied by 1 is 2 2 multiplied by 3 uh, 2 is 4 until 10 so we have a loop from 1 to 10 and we print this n multiplied by this loop variable and the result. Very, very, very simple problem, even more simple than the previous one. Let's solve it. Multiplication table. Uh, new Java class. Multiplication table. Uh, I'll take these two lines here. Uh, I'll create the main method. I'll increase the font size slightly. Uh, the scanner is imported and now this int next int will be read so we have a for loop from 1 until 10 inclusively and we want to print something like print uh, something like uh, i plus multiplied by let's see uh by i no it's n multiplied by i plus equals two and the result is i multiplied by n or maybe n multiplied by i this will be the result from multiplication and one more bracket so this is the solution I have and let's test it so if we have 2 as input the multiplication table will be this 2 by 1 2 by 2 multiplied and the result if we have for example 7 the multiplication table is like this okay I think it's run it's correct uh, and it's pretty simple so I don't feel I need to discuss this more let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson I read n, I repeat uh, 10 times from 1 to 10 for the variable, loop variable i. I calculate the result n multiplied by e and I print, but I use here print f uh, and uh, I use template strings so like percent %e and I print that n multiplied by i uh, is equal to this result. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. It's called biggest number it's about writing a program to find the biggest among uh, n given numbers the the greatest the maximal value number so we read n which is the amount of the input numbers and n numbers which are floating point and we find and print the biggest number for example if the numbers are are this 14 90 90 and 50 the biggest number is 90 okay if there are four uh, numbers which are minus 40 minus 3 minus 90 and minus 50 the biggest is minus 3 
And finally, if we have two uh, 14 point numbers, 1.5 and 2.5, the biggest of them is 2.5. Okay, let's solve this problem. It's called biggest number. Biggest number. Okay, I created a class for this. I'll write the main method. I'll uh, take uh, this from the clipboard, but I want to read the next int. And I have n numbers. So e, uh, double num is equal to scanner dot next next double. Okay, so I have the number. And if this number is bigger by the current biggest num, I'll say that the biggest num equals to num. So I read the next number, for example, 100. If it is bigger by the current, uh, it's this. So how to start uh, uh, double biggest num is zero, but zero will work if we don't have this case. In this case, zero will not work because the starting number should be something very, very small. Like, let's start from a neutral value, which is like this, okay? So this number is assumed to be smaller than any other that will come uh, from the input. And so if we have, for example, minus 100, it will be greater, bigger than this num. So if we pass through all the numbers and check each of them, whether it's bigger or not, we'll find the biggest. So I'll print something like biggest and the biggest number. Let's see whether this works correctly. So I have, for example, uh, three numbers, 10, 20, and 25. Uh, which is the biggest? 25. Okay, if I have five numbers, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, and minus 0 0.5, the biggest is minus 0 0.5. Looks like it works correctly if I have two, minus 3.5, and uh, 1.55. 1.55 is the biggest. Looks like it works correctly, unless we have very small number, for example, uh, this one, for example, and five. The biggest is five, okay, but uh, sorry, if we have this one, and if we have this one, the biggest is, is this, which will be incorrect. I, I mean that if we have this one, and if we have this one, the biggest is still this number. Why? Because this is uh, an no, invalid neutral value. So if I start from double dot uh, negative infinity, this will work better because this is smaller than any number which we can enter through the keyboard. Let's try this again. Uh, the neutral value is negative infinity. So if we have minus, uh, for example, two numbers, two numbers and the first is this one and the second is this one this looks to be the bigger one okay so this is printed this is the same number like this but printed is in a scientific notation this number multiplied by uh, 10 raised to the power of 21 Okay, so let's uh, go ahead with the next problem. But first, let's see the uh, original solution. It is this one. We start from uh, reading n from the uh, input to know how many numbers we want to expect from the input. We take uh, uh, the current max number as integer dot mean value, or uh, yeah, this will work also integer dot mean value also uh, double dot in minus infinity it, it's similar this is something very 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 small negative number uh, this solution works for ints to be honest so we have scanner dot next int and we, we read the next number and if the next number is bigger than the current max number we assign the max number to be the current 
uh, next number. So finally we print the, the solution. This, this solution will work for integers only because it doesn't handle double, double uh, floating point numbers. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. It's uh, very similar to the previous one. It's about writing a program to find the minimum and maximum of a given uh, set of numbers, the biggest and smallest number. So we read n, the count of numbers to be read, and read after that n floating point numbers. And we find and print the min and the max number. This is an example, we have five numbers, and these five numbers are 10, 10, 12, 304, 10, and 50. And we uh, have the min number 10 and the max number 3.4. Because this is very similar to this one, I will copy, paste this class, control C, control V, min and max number will be the name of the new class. And it is copy of the previous one. So uh, we have the biggest num and we'll, we need to have the smallest num, which will be positive infinity. It will start from infinite number plus plus infinity okay and it will uh, if we find smaller than the current uh, smallest num we will assign the smallest num to be num and we want to print both of them the smallest and the biggest smallest or min and the biggest which is max uh, min all smallest number. Let's see whether this works. So, for example, we have three numbers, uh, three numbers, 10, minus 5, and 20, and the min is 5, and the max is 20. This will not work if we have zero numbers, because it, in fact, it works. It says that the minimum number is infinity and the maximum is minus infinity. But we assume that we have at least one number, for example, 55, and both min and max is this number. If we have three numbers, for example, minus 5, minus 2.5, and minus uh, 1.5, the biggest is one point, minus 1 1.5, and the smallest is minus 5. Uh, so this is how this works. It's very, very, very similar. Again, we start from a neutral number, we scan through the numbers, and if we find that the next number is better than the current, we assign the current to the uh, this number which comes from the input. We don't need this. It's imported by mistake. So let's go ahead with the next solution. But first, let's see how we solve this problem. As double dot mean value and max value. Uh, yeah, this is very, very similar to minus infinity and plus infinity. It will work the, the same way. There are different values, but uh, infinity is a special value, which means uh, endless uh, infinity number. And max value is the biggest value which can be represented within the range of double. Both will work correctly, and we can uh, handle this like in this. if. We have min and max, and min is very big value, and max is very small value. If we have the current value x, if it is better than min, we assign min to, to it. If we have x which is bigger than max, we assign max to x. And finally, we print the min and max number uh, using some kind of formatting strings. Uh, so that's all we have. Uh, and uh, I believe you need to learn this min and max fi finding algorithm um, because it's in the basics of searching for something uh, and finding the best value. For example, we want to, in a production of bank system, we want to find all the people uh, who have uh, accounts with less than 1000, uh, for example, um, dollars balance uh, or we want to find the account with the biggest balance so this is uh, something very often um, found problem in the our real world let's go ahead with the next problem it's called vowel zoom it's about writing a problem to zoom n vowels according to the table we want 
we, we assume that A uh, weights 1, E uh, weights 2, etc. Like, like at this table. And for example, X weights 0 because it's not vowel. All others are, are not vowels. We read an integer N and we read N characters each at a separate length. For example, 2AG is 1 because A is 1. Okay, A is 1 and G is 0 because it's not vowel, it's not in this table. Another example is 3 i x u, i is 5, i is 5, uh, and also u uh, is, i is 3, sorry, i is 3, and u is 5, and the sum is 8. Okay, let's solve this vowel sum. Uh, I'll create a new class called vowel sum and this vowel sum will have a main method and in this main method I will have uh, not this I need these two lines which are very similar in most of the problems we solve today I import the scanner and I read a number n and then I, I read n times I will start from um, from some zero. I'll take one because I don't know which type will be enough. Maybe int will also work well. Um, and I read n times a number. So int number. Uh, no, it's not a number. I need to read a char char neck um, char letter equals to scanner dot next one and but the next one is a string which is a sequence of letters so we need to take the first letter here if they enter for example hello we want to take just h which is the char at position zero okay so now if the letter is for example a then the sum will be increased with 1. In the same way, if it is E, will be increased by 2. If it is I, it will be increased by 3. If it is O, it will be increased by 4. And if it is U, it will be increased by 5. And finally, uh, we want to print the sum of vowels. So if we have 3 i x u, let's check whether this works. We have three numbers i x u, three numbers i. Oh, string index out of range. If you don't have experience, you will be uh, unable to find the problem. But the problem is that we read in from the scanner and after that we read the next one. This is incorrect and will not ring. work. You cannot read a line after reading in. You should read only line by line and use integer.parsint. This, this is how the scanner class works because the scanner dot net next in reads a word of a hat from the input from the given input and it fails to read the next line after that this is just the way it works so we either read all the lines line by line or we read only numbers if we mix them this will not work let's run this again and see what happens if we have 3 i x u the result should be 8 3 i x u the result is a if we have 2 a g the result will be 1 2 a g the result is a if we have 0 the result will be 0 obviously the sum of 0 letters is 0 so let's see the example i had in mind before the start of this lesson uh, we read the next one and we parse it to int we start from vowel sum 0, this is the neutral value, the sum of 0 uh, letters, we 
read n times a letter or a character which is the next one and the first uh, letter of the next one which is a position zero okay this one and we you switch if the where uh, the letter is a we increase with i uh, with one if it is e we increase with two etc 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 uh, according to the entire vowel table and finally we print the vowel sum. It's very similar but it uses switch case instead of if else. Both are correct. So let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called zigzag number, uh, zigzag sum. It's about writing a program to calculate the so-called zigzag sum for given numbers. Let's define this. We read the number n and uh, followed by n uh, integers. Uh, for every odd one, we add the number to the result, and for every even one, we subtract subtract the number from the result. So this is an example. We have two numbers. Uh, this is odd one, one one. We add it. This is uh, even one. We uh, subtract it. So it's ten minus minus twenty, which is thirty. Another example is this, 3 plus, uh, plus 10 is 10, minus 20 is minus 10, plus 5 is minus 5. It's very similar, like just a normal sum, but we either add or subtract depending on the line, on the current line. So, sum n numbers, I will take this uh, problem as uh, base. I'll say control C, control V, and it will say zigzag sum. Okay, so this zigzag sum is something like uh, read and then use the sum, uh, read the next double number, and here we always add the next number to the sum. But if I is I will start from 1 to n. If i is odd, okay, I will add it. Otherwise, I will subtract it. Subtract it. Like this. Let's see whether this works. So, we have zigzag zoom. And we have... For example, three numbers, 3, 10, 25, 3, 10, 25, minus 5, works correct. So we can go ahead uh, with the solution I had in mind before the start. We read the number of numbers which we shall process, and we start from neutral sum 0. We repeat n times from 1 to n. We read 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, until n. We read the next number. If the current 1, i, is odd, we add the number to the sum. Otherwise, we subtract the number from the sum. And finally, we print the calculated sum. Very um, simple, and I don't need feel that it needs more discussion. So let's go ahead with the next problem which is called division by 2, 3 and 4. This is more interesting problem. It's about calculating statistics about division to 2, 3 or 4. We have n integers and these integers, some of them are divisible to 2, some of them are divisible to 3, some of them are divisible to 4. Uh, some of them are can be divided to multiple of these numbers. So we want to print how many percentages uh, of these input numbers are divisible by 2, by 3 and by 4. So this is an example which will explain this better. We have three numbers. These three numbers are 3, 6 and 9. So how many of them can be divided by 2 without a reminder? Uh, only this. 1 out of 3, which is 33 percent right how many of these input numbers can be divided by three this this and this all of them 100 percent can be divided to three 
without a reminder because 3 is 1 by 3, 6 is 2 by 3 and 9 is 3 by 3. And again, how many of these input numbers can be divided by 4 without a reminder? No one of these numbers can be divided by 4, so the result is 0%. Another example is 3 numbers, these numbers 4, 6 and 3. And this and this, 2 out of 3, can be divided by 2. 2 out of 3 can be divided by 3, these numbers, 2 out of 3, okay, and 1 out of 3 here can be divided by 4, this one. So let's solve this, um, this problem. I'll call the class division statistics. It will show statistics of division by 2, 3 and 4. It's too long for me, so I'll stop here uh, on the naming. I'll take these two lines. I'll need them. Copy paste. Control C, Control V. And now I'll create a loop from uh, 0 to N and I will have uh, int num equals to scanner dot next int so i have the number and if the number percent two is zero i will need to count this so num give two plus plus i will increase the count of numbers which are divisible to the number of two in the same way i will count how many numbers can be divided by three without a remainder and uh, by three and how many numbers can be divided by four without a uh, remainder uh, i'll have this is zero and this is zero and this is zero uh, okay i can uh, use this comma separated definitions uh, because all of these numbers are real. This, this is how I start. And now I have uh, the count, for example, uh, 2 out of 3. And I want to go to percentages. So I have that num2 out of n, which is this percentage. So I will have 100 by this. And this will be double uh something like nums div to percentage this is how i calculate the percentage how many percents are divisible by two we have this for example five out of ten which is fifty percent okay if we have five out of 10 this will be 50 if i have uh, two out of three numbers this will be two divided by three 60 0 0.66666 in period by 100 and this will be the correct number so this is the formula to convert from mm, this div2 value out of n into percentages it's very simple and obvious for everyone who knows how percentages work okay in the same way for the numbers divisible by three and four i calculate the value and finally i print the uh, this s percent dot to or dot to f floating point numbers with two decimals after the decimal point okay swash n and print f formatted output and after that I print this and i want to print the the percent the how to say the percent like this the percent symbol 
but I'm not sure this will work correctly. But let me try num2 and num3. Okay, so I have 3, 3, 6, 9. 3, 3, 6, 9. 6. Oh no, it's zigzag soon. I didn't start the correct problem. I want to start this division statistics. 3, 3, 6, 9. Oh, I'm known for matter at this one. Looks like this percent doesn't work correct. So, I think I can solve this in a very simple way. Just write the percent along with the new Y symbol at the next one. Okay, run. We have three, three, six, nine percent dot F two. Maybe I not using the correct formatter. Three, three. Six nine. No. Hmm. Print F. Okay. Looks like I forgot how to print with percent. Point to F. I believe it was yes. Uh, okay, I will look in Google mm, like this Java two decimal digits print print F and the correct uh, is system percent point to F yes this is what I have and the value I don't think I have a problem here and this div3 and this div4 but I'm not sure what happens print f let's run this again and check what happens I have three values which are 30 60 and 90 cannot convert integer at this one cannot f why oh because i print the integer number and not the percentages oh, oh problem i i print the count of occurrences instead of the percentage of occurrences of these numbers okay let's uh, go ahead again after the fix uh, I have three numbers three six nine thirty three one hundred zero let me check thirty three one hundred zero and if I have three four six three again another test three four six three it's 66 66 33 no it's incorrect it's incorrect and i want to find why because here we have this is integer this is integer this is integer the entire expression will also be integer if i want to be floating point i need to multiply it by 100.0 Let's try again and see whether this will fix the problem. 3, 4, 6, 3. 3, 4, 6, 3. Yes, this works correctly. Here, this is a floating point expression which will run correctly. So, let's summarize this problem. We read n and we count how many numbers from the input are divisible by 2, how many numbers are divisible by 3, and how many numbers from the input 
uh, data are divisible by four. We calculate them in percentage. How? I have one. I have one hundred point zero percentages at all. If n of n, if all of them are divisible by this, the result will be one hundred percent. If we have two out of three out of four, it will be this percentage. So I convert to percentage and finally I print these percentages. This is the entire solution and let's go ahead to, have to see what I had in mind before the start of this le uh, lesson. I read the next all the numbers and I count how many times I, I have number which is dividable by 2, by 3 and by 4. And finally I will cal calculate the percent. Here the these counters are doubles so this calculation is an expression of type double okay why because this is double this is int and this is int but this is double so this division will be 14 point division if this is int here like my mistake at the beginning if this is int then this will be rounded to integer number and the percentages will be rounded they will be incorrect finally we print the result like i shown you with percent point to f okay let's go ahead for the next um, uh, problem it's called roller coaster simulator we have a roller coaster and we have uh, some places in it uh, for example, uh, we have places here, for example, one, two, three, five places, and we have some uh, minimum age, for example, the minimum age is five, and we have some a queue of people, for example, six years old, seven years old, three years old, five years old, six years old, and eleven years old person, so this guy will be here this will be here this is not within the age limit it will wait and this will take this seat this will take this seat and now the roller coaster is full all the seats are taken by children so it can run and if all places are taken uh, it prints the roller coaster departures otherwise it says waiting this is an example if you have two uh, places at the roller coasters and 10 uh, limit this is the age limit here and this is the places count here two okay and we have these children this matches the age restriction this matches the age restriction this doesn't match the age restrictions and we have two places occupied by two children so it's totally okay the roller coaster is full it will departure otherwise another example we have uh, a roller coaster of uh, five places with 11 a, a sh limit and we have no people waiting here so uh, the queue will be empty and the places in the roller coaster will all be um, not occupied so it should print waiting okay so let's solve this problem it's called rower coaster okay i'll start from the main method and from reading the input something like this i'll take some uh, the scanner because i don't want to write it here and i'll have in places i'll read the places the age limit and i'll read n the numbers in the queue and i'll read n times the uh, int child age is scanner dot next and so i have for example two places in the roller coaster the age limit is 50, is five for example 
I have a child age of three, then four, then seven, then three again, etc., etc., etc. And if the child age is bigger or equal by the age limit, then I have a uh, place field places field plus plus which will start from zero initially so finally if places field are bigger than the places this means that the roller coaster will departure I will take this one because I don't want to write it otherwise the roller coaster will wait waiting I will print this message and let's see what happens run in this case the roller coaster is waiting oh works not correct I have to okay let's debug this I will put a breakpoint here and debug this run this through the debugger I go to the console and I print this input so I have F8 I have the scanner the places the places are 2 this is correct F8 the age limit is 10 it's okay how many people I have in the queue 3 the first person in the queue is a child of age 15 is it above the age limit yes it is so places field are 1 the second child is 12 which is bigger uh, than the age limit so it will be taken to the roller coaster and the next child is was too little to be there so i have two places and two people waiting for these places so ah, i forgot to have eq if the people waiting are more equal than the places in the roller coaster if the award children eligible children waiting for the roller coaster are more than the places available it will departure let's run this again okay. otherwise if the children are less than the places the roller coaster will wait will wait until more children come okay i'll run this again and we'll show you what happens what happens here is that it's waiting looks like I have solved this problem and let's go ahead with this roller coaster simulator to see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson so I read the places and I read the min minimal age restriction I read the queue size uh, this n how many people are on the queue and I count the valid people the valid people count as that uh, I read the person age uh, and if it is bigger than the in mean or equal than the mean age and I still have places in the roller coaster I mm, account that this person will be uh, will take one of the places of the seats and finally I print the result if the places are equal to the valid people in this case the roller coaster will departure otherwise it will wait so this is a valid solution okay this was uh, one of the uh, problems let's go ahead with the next one uh, to write a program to check whether the sum of pairs check the sum of pairs for differences let i will give you an example we read n numbers and n pairs of numbers which means that i read uh 2 times n numbers something like two numbers after that more two numbers after that more two numbers and these numbers 
have sums. I work with these sums. And if the sum of all pairs is the same, I print the value of this sum. Otherwise, I print the maximum difference of the sum between two sequential pairs. This is an example. I have two pairs. Two pairs. The first pair and the second pair. The first pair have sum minus one. And the second have sum minus one. So, yes, all pairs have the same sum. And the value of this sum is minus one. Another example, this is the sum, is this. We have two pairs. The first sum is 11. The, the second is 10. And the difference is 1. The maximum difference here. I may have another, uh, another uh, example where I have three pairs. For example, the first pair is 3 and 5, which will be 8. The second pair will be... Uh, 5 and 4 which will be 9 and the last pair is for example 1 and 1 which is 2 so the difference here is 1 the difference here is how many? it's 7 so the max diff will be 7 and this is the output 7 3 3 5 5 4 1 1 okay so let's solve this problem it's a little bit more complex than the previous one i will take these two things and i will write a new java class it will be code uh, this problem is called equal pairs equal pair pairs pairs okay this equal pairs will have the main method and in, inside this main method it will have this scanner and it will read the number n and inside this number n it will have a whoop uh, for whoop n times it will read a pair it will be something like int num1 equals to scanner dot next int uh, just to check whether these numbers might be uh, assume they are numbers they are doubles okay next double because we don't know anything else about them num2 and the sum is num1 plus num2 okay we have the sum and uh, this num2 we have the sum and we want to see whether this sum is different than the previous sum so we will need a previous sum uh, uh, the difference is the previous sum minus the sum and by absolute value math.abs Okay, this is the absolute difference without the minus. For example, if you have 5 and 6, the difference is 1. If you have 6 and 5, the difference is again uh, 1. Okay, so we have the difference. And if the difference is bigger than the max difference, then max difference will be difference. Okay, and the max difference should start with 0 because in the beginning, uh, if we have no numbers, the max difference is zero. It cannot be bigger than it. Uh, but the pref sum, the pref sum, how it will start? It will start from zero, uh, or it may just it will start with zero but with zero this difference will be incorrect so 
uh, we can say this previous sum will be valid only if we have at least two so here we have previous sum but here we don't have previous sum because there is no previous element here so if i is bigger than zero only in this case we may have difference and max difference okay so here if n is less than two the output is undefined mm. okay it should be like this and should be bigger than one uh, this is the a correction in the problem difference and finally we have the max difference so if the max different is zero if it is zero this means that all the sums are the same okay so i will print that the, all the sums are the same uh, and yes the value is the it will print something like yes the value is and the value is this the last the last sum this pref sum but here i have i remember the pref sum is equals to sum okay the last sum but if all the sums are the same we either print the current sum or the previous sum because they are they have the same value otherwise i'll print that no max div is the max difference it's the most complex problem we have solved until now in our training course about basics of programming and you need to learn how to solve such more complex problems let's try to solve this yes the value is one point minus one and here i have this and no max diff is one and let's see another way three i have 5 and 3, this is 8. 3 and 4, this is 7, the difference is 1. And 1 and 1, this is 2. Here it's, let's see. Here the sum is 8. Here the sum is 7. Here the sum is 2. Okay. Here the difference is 1 between these two, and between these two, the difference is 5. So the max difference is 5, the biggest of this. Okay. So now it should print max div 5 yes it works correctly 5.0 but we assume it's the same one uh, so this was the most complex problem and i have shown you how to solve it this is the solution i had in mind before the start i have the pref sum the previous sum uh, and the maximum difference of two sequential sums i start i read n times the current number and the next number so i don't i just read the sum which consists of two sequential elements and if i is bigger than zero which means that i have previous sum it exists if the previous sum exists i can calculate the current difference and if this difference is bigger than the max diff i remember it in max diff 
Finally, I remember the prefsum in the prefsum sum. So at the next iteration here, I will have the prefsum, which will hold the sum from the previous step. And here I will have the sum, which is the current, current and previous. And I can calculate the difference and I can check whether the difference is better than the maximum. So this is how this works, EQ pairs, okay? This was the last problem and in summary, thank you for joining for the whoops lesson today. We have learned how to use the four whoops to execute a block of code multiple times while certain whoop variable changes its value from one to n or from one to ten or in certain range step by step and the four whoops have components initialization condition step and body this is called initialization this is the initial uh, values of the whoop variable this is the condition for repeating the whoop again and again and again until this is not valid and this is the whoop body which says what to execute more types and this is how we change uh, the loop variable in uh, inside after the loop body if this is empty here if we don't put anything here we'll have most probably endless loop if this condition is invalid we'll also may hit an infinite loop or endless loop so beware, beware and uh, whoops are the first thing which is a little bit more complex than the, the previous lessons so put enough effort to solve the problems you had in the examples and in the homework and write code every day remember to become a software engineer you need to write code every day like people who want to become um, doctors they should study medicine every day for many years did you like this code lesson do you want more join the learners community at softunit.org subscribe to my youtube channel to get more free videos tutorials on computer programming java software engineering and many others get free access to the practical coding exercises and the automated judge system for these code lessons to uh, evaluate your code from the exercises you write. Get help from the mentors and meet other learners. We, uh, we will answer your questions. And it's all free, completely free. So join now.